How do I get the best photosynthesis data with a wireless carbon dioxide sensor? PASCO's experiment library has several photosynthesis investigations to choose from, so I will cover ways to find success with whatever version you choose. Start with a fresh, undamaged spinach leaves and remove the stems. And next, to reduce leaf stress as much as possible, float the leaves face up in room temperature tap water in ambient light for at least 20 minutes before starting the investigation. The leaves can stay in this water bath all day if needed. When you're ready to start, seal the bottle with the sensor, connect it to spark view or capstone and let it warm up for at least three minutes. I've already connected my sensor and created a digits and graph display. So I'm gonna start collecting data to monitor the carbon dioxide readings over the three minute warm up period. By the end of the warm up period, the CO2 level should not be changing very much as long as the sensor is still in the bottle. Right now, the sensor has only changed two parts per million so far and it's looking flat. It looks like there's no overall trend yet. So it doesn't look like it needs to be calibra calibrated, but you should always wait until the warm up time is complete before deciding whether you need to calibrate or not. A properly calibrated sensor will read about 400 parts per million in fresh air. So mine's looking right around there. Um, but you're, if you're indoors and the concentration is a couple hundred parts per million higher than 400, um, but it's stable, you won't need to calibrate. That makes sense because you're inside and you're not in fresh air. Now, if you're at the three minute mark, you've waited your three minutes for warm up, and you're seeing that your sensor is reading far above or far below 400 parts per million, or the carbon dioxide concentration is showing big jumps, more than just a couple, like you see here, we only see a couple parts per million change. If you're seeing like large jumps in, uh, in PPM, or you see a definite upward trend or downward trend, that's a sign that you should calibrate. But right now we're collecting data um, and I, I'd have to hit stop to show you what happens uh, or where to find the calibration instructions in the menu. So we would be looking in this top left corner in the menu. Um, I'm going to run a movie um, right now since, since I can't hit stop. So here we go. Here's a video of what the help menu does. So if you go to the top left corner and you click help, it will take you to PASCO's website and the online help for SparkView. And in the search bar, you can type in calibrate CO2 and click on calibrate a wireless CO2 sensor in, in the instructions. We've already done the first couple steps. It's very short, quick calibration. Follow the directions there. And I also want to point you out to this extended calibration section that we'll reference later. It's not necessary. You may or may not need to refer to that section later on. Now let's get back to our experiment and see what time we're at. Looks like I've only been doing two minutes and we have one more minute to wait for calibration. It's looking good so far. Our changes here are only two parts per million at a time. It's very small, that's good news. Still gotta wait till three minutes till, till we decide whether we're gonna calibrate or not. Now, um, while we're waiting, uh, just wanted to also point out that if you want to look for a how do I video uh, for calibrating, we do have a calibrate wireless carbon dioxide sensor on the how do I video choices. Now, um, so we're still waiting for a warm up. I can pick a leaf to do photosynthesis with. I'm gonna choose this large leaf here. Um, you can do more than one leaf, that's fine if you want, but you're going to make sure that all the leaves fit inside the bottle without overlapping on one another if you do choose more than one. And the reason why, uh, you're going to put the leaf face up and flat to the bottom. You want light to be covering the full surface of the leaf so that photosynthesis can be maximized. So when you do pick a light source, you want a strong light source like this LED flashlight, it's very strong. Um, or you can use a compact fluorescent light bulb. Like I have, I have an LED bulb in here, but I could also use a CFL. Just don't use an incandescent or halogen bulb. The, those lights add excess heat and um, actually can slow down photosynthesis and even damage the plastic. So no incandescent or halogen. Now, uh, looks like my sensor is warmed up. Uh, it's, I've got to three minutes, so I'm gonna hit stop. Now, let me look at what's going on here. Uh, all of these changes are only two parts per million. The overall, I started at 382 parts per million was my first data point right here. I'm gonna click it and show you that value of 382 parts per million to start. Probably can't see it on the video, but I'm reading over here. It's ended at 376. This is a very small change um, from the perspective of parts per million. Even more dramatic if I show you the scale, now I'm going, my scale is from 376 to about 400. You can see that that's barely any change. So I'm satisfied, I don't need to calibrate this sensor. Um, now, I need to get photosynthesis going. So most of the lab instructions for photosynthesis will tell you 
to set the leaf in the container. And you might be thinking, oh, I've tried this lab and my kids always, my students, they just, they end up crushing the heck out of that leaf. Well, I can, I'm going to show you an alternative way to do this investigation that makes this step a little bit easier. But for now, we're just going to use the bottle method. So I've got my leaf face up as flat as I can get in the container. And I've pushed it all the way to the end so that there's no shadow from the probe. And now I'm going to turn on the light source. And once we've got this set up, we've got the light on shining where we want. Leaf is covered fully with light. Now we have to wait one minute, one minute before we begin data collection. And that's so that the sensor can come back to equilibrium because it takes a second to adjust. It's just one minute of wait time. So um, while we're waiting, I'm going to show you that alternative setup that's a little bit easier than the bottle. So all you need for the alternative is a quart zipper bag, quart size. So open the bag, place your dry leaves inside. So you have to dry them off just like before, nice and dry. Set the leaves face up in the bag. And um, you also want to make sure that your life's light source will cover all the top surfaces of the leaves facing up. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Well, that's warming up there. Let's scoot this over. Now, you can even, um, if you've done a very good draw job of drying your leaf and it's completely dry, you can even place one of your leaves over the probe of the CO2 sensor facing up as you place the probe in the bag. Make sure that your leaves are fully in the light and push out the extra air from the bag without crushing the leaves. And you do want a little bit of air space below those leaves so that they can breathe. So gas exchange can occur there. And from here, you can just set on your light source and do photosynthesis as if you were doing it in the bottle the same way. So now I know that I've had at least one minute of equilibrium time. I'm going to hit start to begin the photosynthesis run. And I'm going to turn on the purple run that you saw a second ago to show you what it, what the um, warm up looked like. So this was, you can see that was a very small change in CO2 while we were warming up the sensor in purple. And in green here on the graph, that's current data of CO2 dropping while photosynthesis occurs in the bottle with my, my setup. So um, if you are looking at this rate and thinking, oh, that's great. And I think this is a very nice rate going on. But if you want to see even faster rate, try the bag method because we've got less volume of air here to change uh, with CO2. So you might um, increase the rate of photosynthesis by changing the volume of your container. Um, or you can uh, look for, uh, you could put even more leaves in your bag, or you can look for a light source that's even higher intensity than what you tried previously. You could add more light sources to your setup like a second flashlight. Um, or when your leaves are soaking here, uh, in the, it, while they're floating and waiting to be started in the photosynthesis ex experiment, you can turn on an extra light and have the light flooding your floating leaves while you're waiting to begin. But um, if you do choose to do extra light while they're floating, make sure that whatever light you put on while the experiment is running is much more intense than what was in this system so that you can see a higher rate uh, to boost that photosynthesis rate. So um, let's say that you tried all these methods and you even did the calibration, the standard calibration, and you're still not seeing the results that you expect. You might need to do what's called an extended calibration. So it just takes a little bit longer. It takes uh, a few minutes longer than uh, a standard calibration and the directions for that you will find in the same place as before. Remember I pointed out, you go here in the top left, you go to help and you search for um, carbon dioxide sensor calibration and look for the extended calibration instructions. And they're on that same help page I showed you a moment ago. So check out Pasco's Experiment Library for Photosynthesis Lab write-ups and more ideas. Happy photosynthesizing and thanks for watching.